about your favorite bedtime story. <laughs> Hi there, and welcome to another conversation on Parents Corner, where we inspire you as a parent and bring on conversations where you can learn and learn from other people as well. On today's conversation, we are joined by Masi Masika Nguro, award-winning gospel artist. I know she's not she's not a stranger to many to many of you, and she's beloved by many many people. Join me in welcoming Masi on Parents Corner. Masi. Yay! Yeah. <laughs> Absolute pleasure to have you. It's a pleasure meeting you too. Yeah? Yeah. You're a bundle of joy. Oh my gosh. <laughs> you know? In fact, for the people who are watching, if they were able to see what we were doing before. a few minutes before we started rolling. Yeah, yeah, you're really something. No, it's nice to meet you. And thank you for honoring our invite. Mm -hmm. I wonder, when you think about who Mercy is, mm -hmm. what is it about Mercy mm -hmm. that we don't know? Um, who is Mercy? Okay, of course, I, I don't like assuming that everybody knows me. Mm -hmm. There are people who are like, Ati, where do you know me? So, um, <laughs> <laughs> so Masi, Masika is my name. I'm a gospel minister. Uh, what people don't know about me is, um, wow, there's a lot they don't know. <laughs> <laughs> and there's a reason why they don't know about what they shouldn't and, know about. Yeah, yeah. If there's anything possible, you'd, we'd have loved for people to know about this other side of Masi that makes yeah. you different and unique. Mm -hmm. What would that be? I, I think I really, I think the only thing that makes me kind of different is I value so much godliness and integrity. So much, I need so much. I think, I'm, I'm not perfect, please don't treat me wrong. But I think what I really, I wish everybody would walk in integrity, it would make their lives easier. I, I think of that every day, you know. I, 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 I study people every day. Wow. I'm into, you know, 16 personality tests and personality tests. Wow. And I study people yeah. for, for a living. I can tell who are the most rebellious personalities. I can tell you, you know, people who like people. I met you and I was studying <laughs> you. I'm like, okay, so this one is, you know. So I think that's one thing people also don't know. Yeah. I, my, my life is about studying people. So that's I, interesting. You're a people watcher. Yes, I'm a people watcher. And so I think eventually I'll become a counselor because to some degree I think I'm good. <laughs> yeah. That's a good one. Mm -hmm. That's a good one. Yeah. There's something I wanted to ask you that has just skipped my mind, which has come back. Mm -hmm. You talked about integrity. Yeah. And I do agree with you, well, integrity is everything. Mm -hmm. This being a parenting platform, mm -hmm. what can we do at the home level mm -hmm. to start inculcating integrity in our homes mm -hmm. and then of course you know it trickles down into the society into our places of work into the whole society how things are done by the government because sometimes i think you know when somebody comes to your door and you tell your child yeah i'm your home to mama yuko yeah yeah small things like that so what can we do different in the homes yeah i think kids kids are um they learn more from watching than from hearing. Mm. So what you, I remember the other day, my son came to my room. He's like, I wanted to see if you guys make your beds, so then you tell us to make your beds. <laughs> it's only that you just keep telling us. And so they watch a lot and they learn from uh, how you live your life. And so I think integrity is big. For me, I think I picked from my dad because my dad is quite straight. Mm. And, and, and really, to this day, I quite admire my dad and thank God he's with me. And so I think for us as parents, really, we have to live that life of integrity yeah. uh, 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 so that our kids emulate that. So sometimes when kids don't come out well, you go like, oh, is it me? You know, most parents <laughs> go like that. Yeah. Because to some degree, yeah, you kind of can tell it's true, it's you. Upbringing, so what, yeah? Yeah, yeah. Because my, my prayer is that my kids will pick. Sometimes they, they become rebellious, but I really pray that they pick. But I know that when you set them off, you set them up early in training, mm. usually they come back. I've always seen kids who are crazy. By the time they're 30, 40, kids, they've mellowed out. Yes. That, that, that phase of craziness is over. So do it, do it, do it. <laughs> <laughs> I know, integrity starts from home. Yeah. I took you so fast from who Mercy is to Parents? Mercy the parent. Let's go back. Mm -hmm. How was your upbringing like? What, what did you love about growing up? Mm -hmm. What stands out in your childhood? Well, uh, growing up was, uh, I was an introvert. I did not know what my problem was. Cause uh, <laughs> I'd, go, I'd go to a new school and I'm looking for a place to hide. Do you know? As in now later on, later on when I'm studying because when I realized, oh, this thing started early. Cause mm -hmm. I remember going to a school in, in, in Shags. We came from Nairobi and went to Shags, Machakos. 
And so I was looking for a place where I can just be alone. So I'd go behind classes. Funny enough, nobody was there. Really? You know, so there's always a place where I would hide. would go for lots of conferences because my parents would organize conferences for you know, leaders and that right, kind of thing. Right, right. And so uh, I would always find myself hiding, looking for a place to hide just to have some peace and quiet. In high school too, Everywhere I was always looking for peace and quiet, so I did not know that I was an. I thought I was just weird. That comes off as very surprising because yeah. you are you come across almost as an extrovert. I know. Um, in, in my study, the, um, most some introverts come out as extroverts, but they're really introverts. So that's why you don't believe me when I tell you I'm an introvert. Oh, you are. No, I'm an ambivert. But you're more. I'm an, I'm an ambivert. You're I'm, loud. I'm a serious combination of very loud yeah. and I can literally be on an island alone for the longest time and be away from everything and okay. I'm okay. Yeah. So I'm um, a blend of the two. Yeah. So my upbringing was that, was godly, um, godly parents. Um, uh, I think I really admire that. Just the fact that we, they always took time to teach us. Right. To give us stories of people who have failed. We have so many stories of how they failed, why they <laughs> <laughs> True. <laughs> you know, countless stories and, and, and you know, I think that really helped and um, it, it's important that they took time also just to teach us. Yeah. Teach us like, to this day, my dad is on my, you know, you see, if you don't finish your master's in the next 10 years, you'll be irrelevant. You know, all those kinds of things. You need to do something <laughs> yeah, now. you need to get your PhD now. So, uh, um, really thank God for that. Mm. So, Machakos is where you grew up in. Yes. Yeah, a lot of my life was in Machakos. Okay. Um, yeah, yeah. Coming from Nairobi, I really thank God for the balance because I got to learn English. In Wait, how did you end up in Nairobi? My parents were teachers, <sighs> so my dad was in Nairobi school. So when he was in Nairobi school, you know, we went to Lavington Primary. Eight. And, uh, it, it was, <laughs> I was a kid then, but my English got fine. So then from there, from class one, we went now to Machakos. So it was Machakos all through. Mm. Then Embu, a bit of boarding school, Where? which I couldn't take. Uh, I left. Did you take your kids to boarding school? Me? No. no, no. Hmm. I keep threatening them, but I can't. Where are you going? I'm going to go boarding. So no, I usually go like, Baba, I'm going to another country. I'm going to watch a boat. Yeah, but mom, sorry. <laughs> Yeah, they believe me, they think I really, but I wouldn't take mm. them. But anyway, it's, it's it, it, well, different people, different. Decisions. Absolutely, absolutely. Yeah. But for me, boarding didn't work. For my sisters, it worked. Yeah. And for our family friends, it was like peer pressure. Yeah. All the parents took their kids to uh, boarding school. Yeah, not alone, I hated boarding. You hated boarding? Absolutely. In yeah. fact, it's a part of my life where I literally have cut it off from my brain. Yeah. I never want to remember. It was traumatic. Yeah. 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 So Embu. Mm -hmm. Then Amo after that, boarding. Yeah. Then after that, then I, I came back to Machakos Primary. Okay. Then Machakos Girls. Then Machakos Daystar University. Then oh, I, you went to Daystar. Yeah. What did you study? Education. Education. I've ended up as a teacher. Yeah. Uh, I think I am. I'm, I'm still becoming. And even with your ministry, you are actually a teacher. Yeah. 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 And your songs. Yeah. But but I wish I went to school to teach, but um, somehow I just didn't. I, I, I focused more on music, which I'm glad I did, mm. because that was what I really loved. So I, I still think I'll teach. Mm. Mm. If you are ever to become a teacher, what would you teach? English. <laughs> <laughs> music, yeah. social ethics, the things that keep people straight, you know. English, mm. so that I can bring in my stories, literature, right. life lessons, you know. I like that. Uh, and um, uh, CRVs, uh, social ethics, anything to do with morals. I'm big on that. You are there. Yeah, the I hear. Headmistress. I hear you. I, I hear you. Yeah. I hear you. Yeah. Having come to Nairobi, that was now you are in Daystar. Yes. You finished what you're studying there, education. Mm -hmm. How was life after? Mm -hmm. How was life? No sooner had I finished than I got married. So wow. for me, um, it was just marriage immediately. Um, how was that? I was broke. <laughs> <laughs> I was, uh, I was, I was kind of a bit famous, but not so much. So, so the money wasn't coming in, and I tried a job, it didn't work for me. Mm -hmm. so I, I don't want to be employed. So um, consequences of not being employed uh, were hard. Yes. Yeah, so I think every, <laughs> everything you start at the beginning is tough. So it was yeah. really, really, really tough for me. So finding myself, I, I felt like I was, you know, getting married and children, because it was one year after, it was just a, a, a dark period. I can imagine. Yeah. So you've come right from campus, mm -hmm. Daystar, mm -hmm. 
in between you're trying to launch your singing career. Mm -hmm. In the mix of all that you get your children back to back, almost back to back. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. That must have been something on your on your mental energy. Yeah, it, it was, it was, and especially because um, my hubby was the one who was making more money when, you know, we were courting. So what happened is he lost everything. You know how you lose um, what you were doing and then you lose the, all the money that you were saving in millions. Wow. So uh, I remember asking, am I a curse or a blessing? Cause, oh, you know, uh, why do you think that? Because no sooner had I come, <laughs> then everything is being wiped <laughs> out of his life. Had, yes, everything. I'm literally. sorry. Even business partners, like four businesses he was doing, fell apart. Of course, later on we came to realize that God was in it, and so through our marriage, the first few years, you know, because now he's disappointed, he doesn't know what to do. I'd be thinking, wow, we are failures, you know. We 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 really are lost and and. And I found myself in a place of depression without even going. Oh, so, I'm sorry. So later on is when my sisters tell me, we used to come, you don't even greet us. You used to just sit depressed. I didn't know. You know but there was that sense of like hopelessness. You know, when you don't know where you're going to get your rent. You don't know what next. Really, as in like, I'm having babies. I'm having pregnancy complications. That's tough. Yeah, so I, I really didn't know what, you know, what would become of me. And so um, to, to some degree, I think I'd given up in life in a way. You know, and someone would ask me, someone would ask me to do a personality test, I remember at that time. <laughs> I was like, I don't know who I am. I think I lost myself a long time ago because wow. I, was, I was so crushed. But at the end of the day, you realize, for me, I, I know it's God who was working on me. He even made it clear to us that for me and my husband, he was working on us. Uh, wow. For ministry, sometimes preparation for ministry, and I know people who are in ministry understand the training is a bit tough. Yeah. It just makes me wonder, on those days when it was tough, and dark mm -hmm. and you're somebody's partner mm -hmm. it's it's hard to imagine that then you have this spiritual foundation mm -hmm. and in the thick of things you are struggling to to find strength for yourself mm -hmm. most of the time when you have partners you're then being encouraged be the person mm -hmm. who encourages your person to keep going mm -hmm. i don't think i was an encouragement <laughs> <laughs> Knowing what you know now yeah. compared to what you know then, yeah. now what I would you have done better? Wow, I'd have, you know, like the other day I was saying, I wish right now is when I'd be having babies, but I don't think I'd be who I am right now. That day. Mm -hmm. But one of the things that people go through is when you're having babies and you're broke, you're married. <laughs> the way you put it, Marcy. <laughs> <laughs> you're having, it's true, because a lot of people who are watching are there. You're having babies, but mm. you're broke. And the broke is really bad. And uh, uh, marriage begins to shake. Mm. Uh, so there were times I thought, "Wow," because you begin to have fights, but they're not because you are you don't like each other. You no, don't it's because of the money frustration. So at that time, I did not know. I, I was not able to dig deep and say, "Okay, this is a problem." Mm -hmm. But it is a problem when you when you're walking and you're having babies and you don't have money. Yeah, that's really something that can really blow your marriage. And I've seen a lot of people break up within those first five years of marriage. Yeah, and it's after the baby came. No sooner, you know, the baby came. That's when the problem. It's started. expensive. Yes, it's not only it's ex just also the emotional yeah. drain of bringing up a, a, a newborn. Yeah, and so that's what happened for us. But hey, I'm grateful. My husband was hands-on as much as I was not very grateful, but he was hands-on. I never, thank God. I never complained once. You know, those husbands you hear actually, they don't shake. His was good with babies. Actually, he brought up many other babies before <laughs> nice. than me, so he was better. So somehow that kept a balance <laughs> <laughs> at that time. Mm. Of course, things, uh, things change. My mom kept telling us because they kept encouraging us. Things change. It's like the only. Were you seeing it at that time? Nah. Nah, I wasn't seeing it. <laughs> <laughs> no, I went to studio once within five years. So, wow. Yeah, it, was, it was just a quiet moment for me. I, I, I never even used to want to see music on TV because I'm like, oh, they're gonna make me feel bad. Yeah. Yeah. Did you ever did you ever feel that God has abandoned you? I kept feeling that. Yeah. I kept feeling that. Um, I, I felt like he was very busy. Um, with other people. Yeah. When are you passing by here? Yes, <laughs> yes. There was a song Christina Shusha sang um, when I was almost coming out. It's Nimi Fikiri Wako when you haki yaku bari kiwa tu. Kumbe barak. Ni haki yaki la moja. That's exactly how I felt. I felt like, oh, it's like there are people just who are meant to do well. And I wow. see that in my comments on Instagram every day. That when I'm giving them advice on something, someone goes like, but you, you're blessed. 
you know so you have that no part, idea yeah yeah you have no idea that you've been through that you know season where you were thinking oh, okay god you're really you're really not listening to me but but one thing i decided along the way is that i won't give up on my faith I'll not give up on God. Mm. I'll not compromise. I'll just keep, you know, keep, keep trusting God. I remember telling God, God, when you come, fine. If you don't, if you come, fine. If you don't, fine. Wow. I'll still be in you. Cause, cause that, that's how you're tested. You're tested with obedience. You're tested with tough times. You still trust me. Yeah. Things are tough. That's wonderful. Yeah.